Michael Aspel, award-winning presenter and entertainer, has been in the business for over 50 years. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Michael has enjoyed an unprecedented degree of privacy and discretion, and has managed to maintain a wholesome image. But all that is about to change. Now, you know, you're sweet and everything, Michael, but this is something I really have to do. I just, I just have to. It's On November the 4th, 2003, his life was turned upside down. Yeah, I think it's wrong. I think all these people have been majorly affected by the choices he's made in his life, and I think it's important that he takes responsibility. When he's in front of the camera, it, you know, it's, it's lovable Uncle Mike. Um, but when the camera stops running, then, then there's this other side that, that kicks in that I think few people are aware of. That other side encompasses his business dealings. He gets what he wants. He's powerful in that sense. I mean, he was brutal, brutal. His affairs. I mean, he is just a, a sexual man. And a secret he has hidden for over 30 years. My God, what a story. I, I can't think of a showbiz story ever that is as phenomenal as this. My life has been a gamble in many ways, professionally and otherwise. If Michael was behaving now the way he did then, he wouldn't stand a chance. Well, he's created, a, he's created a monster. Does anyone know the real Michael Aspel? Well, after this program, they will. For the first time, Michael Aspel has allowed a camera crew into his life to tell his story. OK, but remember, Michael's got a lot on, so you need to keep hey, your friends snappy. I've kind of come to terms with myself and my life and what has happened to me, and I, I'm ready to to give a proper account of it without people prying and getting the wrong idea. I'm here, really, to tell the truth. Not looking too bad. Garden, I mean. But it's, uh, it's hard work, and when you've had such heat as these have had, I mean, they've really suffered. I mean, these rhododendrons, I mean, they're looking, looking pretty done in. There are people, of course, who think that there are too many rhododendrons around. You know, they've flooded the whole of the southern counties of England. They've dug their roots underneath. And uh, I think they're causing a lot of subsidence. But nevertheless, they are flowers and they should be looked after. I've got to try and get this back, though. It's, it's had it, almost. The thing about Michael is he's an obsessive. So, <laughs> you know, he can be obsessive about anything from wine to gardening to women. But he was an amazingly warm man. I mean, a career that spanned certainly, you know, over 50 years. If any presenter of my generation were honest, we'd have to say that really he's always been the sort of godfather figure. I mean, my earliest memory is uh, seeing Michael on Ask Aspel as a child I used to watch. In fact, I used to think his first name was Ask. On Ask Aspel, no sooner do you ask than you get, so it... Uh... And that's what just makes it so incredible, that underneath those patterned sweaters and that side parting, there was this hotbed of sex. This is a very special man that actually can cross through those genres, and that is the whole point about his personality, is he's a bit of a chameleon. First of all, let's meet the girls, and number one is Miss Barnsley. When I was about uh, 16, I went down to Brighton with a bunch of pals, and we went to see a fortune teller, and she said something very important. She said, you will never amount to anything. I thought, right, I'll show you you're wrong, and I did everything from then on at 110%. And um, where do you normally sit? Well, normally I sit just over by that old tree there, because, you know, trees, you like to be close to them. They sort of give out an aura, a lovely thing, God what. This is how nice he was, and I know I was feeling very miserable one day, and Michael actually had taken the trouble took the trouble to get my phone number and address and a couple of days later I get this invitation say Michael Aspel garden party. Michael's garden parties became a legend I mean you had to be there it was one of those oh god I've been invited to Michael's I mean it was really was it was great sort of yeah, you know I'm on the list for Michael's. David Attenborough was doing wildlife in those days it wasn't Sir David then and I said do you know Michael? He said no I've never met him and um, he said why are you here? I, he said I don't know but I must admit I'm feeling a lot better. We've had uh, evening parties, risings of the night, fireworks, the lot. It's been, it's is that been great fun. Toy Castle? A what? Toy Castle. Ah. 
Oh, well, yes, but I mean, that, uh, that's been here a long time. It's a uh, really thing from the past, and um, I suppose someone might make use of it again sometime. But um, it's very popular with the, well, the Antiques Roadshow crowd. You know, we come down here sometimes after a recording and they romp around, and uh, some of them go up there for hours. I mean, Henry Sandon, Bunny Campione, she loves it. You can't get her down. Michael's television career started in 1957 at the BBC Lime Grove Studios, where he worked as a news announcer. Lime Grove was a very professional outfit, and Michael had to live by the rules. It was only the BBC in those days. It was black and white television, and we introduced the shows, did the weather forecast, and said goodnight before the national anthem. We were the face of broadcasting. We were, we were pioneers. You're about to see something that has never been seen live on a television screen before. A lot was on the shoulders of, of the newsreader, because that's all, it was the voice, the delivery, and just a couple of stills, if you were lucky. That's all from us. So good night for me, now look at tomorrow's weather chart. I mean, honestly, you would not have believed what the newsroom was like in those days. It was like a war zone. I've never seen such...